Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Ultimate Upon Dreadnoughts. Today we're looking at one of the other scenarios from my Naval Architects. That's a Patreon tier that you can join to help fund the channel, and at the same time get to skip most of the scenario queue and get your scenario featured almost right away. This scenario, Blockade Runner, was sent in by Chaos Fruit. We've seen Chaos Fruit do scenarios before, and they're usually a lot of fun. So, let's see what he has for us today. It is 1945. The key leaders of the Nazi party are fleeing from Germany. You are on the last warship built by the Kriegsmarine. You are the last ship leaving Kiel and you must break through a blockade blocking you from getting into the Atlantic. Due to recent weather conditions, the RAF is not able to fly in and stop you. Good news, no aircraft. Not that there are any in the game, but hey, uh, you never know. Anyway, I get to build a battleship, battle cruiser, heavy cruiser, light cruiser or destroyer. There is one problem here, and that is that I have a budget of only 40 million, and I must have maximum range. So those two factors are going to really impact the kind of ship that I want to, well, that I can buy. Um, seeing as last week I built a battle cruiser, I'm not going to build a battle cruiser, I'm probably going to build a heavy cruiser, but battleships... They run expensive, especially in 1940. If I would build a battleship, uh, a super battleship, even with minimum displacement, 61 million. A modern battleship at minimum displacement starts at 29 million. If you add stuff like a tower on there, and then a secondary, you're already looking at 40 million plus. So that one is also out. That leaves a light cruiser, a heavy cruiser, or a destroyer. Let's go heavy cruiser. Let's say that Germany at this part of the war got so exhausted from fighting that she does not have the funds or the capabilities to build a battleship anymore. And it's just a heavy cruiser. Now, at maximum range, it is probably beneficial to use coal. Oh, sorry, to use oil. Because it takes a lot away from fuel stowage. It does significantly increase your fuel cost. Oh, by a million, no less. And it lowers the displacement by 500 tons. Oh, maybe it's not that worth it. Forced boilers. Um, if we go for diesel engines, though... We can get 13 million. 12 million semi-oil. That still allows for a lot of cash to be spent on this ship. Maybe I can make something like this work. Let's see. It is German, so it is most likely very heavily over-engineered. Uh, and that actually suits my purposes just fine. Because it will allow me to build a highly technologically advanced warship that will probably be capable of taking on any and all threats. I have 40 million... And I have 20,000 tons of displacement. Let's go with an Uberfunnel, just because it sounds German. I'm not sure if I need that engine um, output, though. Funnel capacity, let's say if I take 55, even 55 puts me at best. Uh, they do impact the weight a bit, 57%. If I go for a balanced boiler, I'm still at 100. And what was the forced one? Makes it about as heavy. Induced, 790. Still 100%. Does that mean that it's more expensive? No, not really. Natural? Natural is not good enough. I'm going to have to go with induced boilers. Okay. We're fighting a heavy cruiser. Let's go with maximum barbette thickness. Anti-torp? All of it. There are destroyers about, and they're probably not happy to see me. Turtleback armor scheme, lots of bulkheads. Now, that is a really quick way to get rid of all your possible displacement. Having such a lot of armor on this ship. As for guns, um, I think I went 8 inch in the last, let's say, budget build video that I did. And there's not so much a budget that I'm looking at, but a displacement problem. Um. Ideally, I'd be using 6-inch guns, because it's probably more than enough to deal with destroyers and light cruisers, but it might not be enough to deal with a heavy cruiser. 11-inch guns feels like something way too powerful. 
I might be able to get away with it. But the reload of 34 seconds kind of throws me off. Electrohydraulic turrets and autoloaders. Uh, that puts me at a reload of 20 seconds. Oof. Displacement is going to be a real problem here. Because I don't have a rangefinder yet. I don't have a radar yet. And I don't have any secondaries yet. I don't have a hydrophone yet. See? There we go. Reduce torpedo protection to 3. And barbette protection to heavy. Now I have another 1,000 tons to play around with. Armament-wise, this will be able to deal with the heavy cruiser. And if we can just put a couple of 6-inch guns to assist, that will be able to deal with the destroyers pretty quick. These have a rate of fire of 20 seconds, or 2.88 rounds a minute. These can do double that. So let's put a 6-inch right underneath. I think it's not the first time that I built the ship a bit like this. But last time around, it did really work well. So I'm thinking it might as well work this time around. Some pretty heavy foreweight offset. Aft weight offset. I don't quite like this deck space here. 0 0.4... 0 0.1. Okay. Now... Armor-wise, this might be enough, but it's a bit iffy. Is there anywhere I can save some weight? I mean, sure, gear turbines are going to save you some weight. But I'm very, very close to my cost. Whereas if I'm using diesel, I'm saving lots of catch. Catch? Cash. I'm saving lots of catch. Yes, clearly. Is it at all possible to throw a barbette in the middle of the ship? Unfortunately not. But I could have a couple of 6-inch guns sitting over here. Their angle of fire is not as good as I'd hoped. And it looks weird. There is another aspect that I can save on. And that's speed. I find 30 knots to be not great. But I think I'm going to be forced to use that. Let's go with a couple of 5 inch. Let's make duels this time around. Just to make sure I piss some people off in the comment section. And torpedo launchers potentially. I could have it all the way over there, but... I don't know how a torpedo would even reach the water if I put the torpedo tube over there. Uh, maybe you'd be able to uh, do drive-by torping. So three tubes there. They're going to be 21-inch torpedo tubes. And they're going to be fast torps. These things will be a sort of a last-ditch effort. In case I come up to something real close, this is going to be my ace in the hole. And my ace in the hole is going to make a hole in their ship. Now, a couple of 4-inch, I think, will fit on... No, 3-inch? Yeah, 3-inch doubles. Okay. This, this part I don't like. But if I move the structure either forward or backwards, the whole ship's going to start to complain. Ideally, I'd have this as one large superstructure, because I think it just looks the best. But then I have a pretty significant four-weight offset. There we go. 1, 5, 0 0.9, 0 0.7. Come on now. 0 0.4. It does mean that we're putting this 6-inch quite far away from where I had hoped it would be. Because I wanted to keep it underneath the main turret. But it looks like that's not going to be an option here. Alright, my triple torps. Over there. Secondary 5 inch dual barrel. Tugged in there to make sure it doesn't obstruct the torpedo tube. And another one there. Um, do I need anything else? I'm operating solo so I don't need a radio. Auxiliary engines are nice. 
because they just allow your ship to turn a hell of a lot faster. Turning circle is currently currently 681. You're not very maneuverable. 558. Five, In a turn, she slows down about 17%, and that's rounded up. That's not too bad. Now let's throw on a bit of turret armor. Last thing I want to see is one of my turrets leaving the ship. Can't trust those things. They will abandon you if they get a flash fire. Ship is overweight. Bit of turret top. No, overweight. I'm considering reducing these to 10 inch. Because a 10 inch triple is just a bit lighter. And it would save me quite a bit of weight. So I can put that in the place of the armor. Because I'd rather have a slightly less powerful ship that survives than have a ship that has a lot of firepower but gets killed off pretty quick. Because that just doesn't suit anybody. Six inch armor all around. Uh, deck armor won't really be a problem because we're starting at 10,000 meter range. So we're starting really close. That means that we are already in range of the torpedoes. Fast torps that is. We got Sonar 3, that's the best Sonar Suite I have. Could I make the ship a bit smaller? Because I'm looking for a smaller turret, oh sorry, uh, not turret rotation, but uh, turning circle. 20,000 tons? No, not quite. Let's see, where can I save? A bit of deck armor? Not enough. Not enough. No, that's not going to fly. Conning tower back up to 8. Deck 2 inch. Let's improve secondaries a bit. Six and a half and six and a half. There we go. Pretty well armored ship. The Victoria Louise. I think I'm feeling quite confident with the ship. It's a bit of an unorthodox design with a main armament of 10 inch backed up with 6 inch. But considering I'm facing various different threats, I think this can work. The only thing is, I cannot tell the 6 inch to engage anything other than the main target. So there is a case to be made that there shouldn't be 6 inch, there should be 5 inch. But the damage that the 5 inch put out is 275. And the damage that the 6 inch put out is... Uh, hello? Sorry, 405 for the 6 inch. And it was it 295? 275. Nah, that's a pretty significant change. I'm going to stick to the ship as is. Let's go. Now, uh, 10 British ships total, but 6 destroyers, which means that there is a fairly high chance of seeing destroyers that launch torps at me right from the start. This looks like a light cruiser, a pretty large light cruiser at that, with a huge amount of freeboard. Over here we have the destroyers then, not a lot of freeboard. Single torpedo launcher that I can see. And where's your heavy cruiser? Here you are. Eight barrels. Quintuple, sorry, dual quintuple torpedo launchers. Good lord, that thing could be a real threat. I'd say we take that one down first. Primary, secondaries. And we're going to turn away a little bit. Because I don't quite know what the offensive capabilities of those ships are. There is one way to find out, and that is to get shot at. But that doesn't really appeal to me. We did send out the torpedoes. I'm just not sure what they were sent against. But I'm thinking this light cruiser in the back. That's probably what those torps were going out for. There's a lot of incoming shell fire. So far we're taking damage to the funnels. Oh, this is a nice shot. Some damage to the funnels. 
But most of the shells that are inbound are just bouncing off the ship so far. I have done 51 points of damage. Yeah, it's the 10 inch that got a small hit in. Looks like they're heavy cruisers maneuvering. My accuracy is pretty bad. I'm only 2%. I don't carry too many rounds of these, so I'm going to have to be a bit cautious not to... Oh. What? Is that my doing? Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> that was a destroyer that got hit accidentally by a 10-inch gun. And the 10-inch gun did 2,500 damage to it. So they are down one destroyer. Which suits me perfectly fine. A dead destroyer is usually a good destroyer. So, uh... Five more to go. 2.1% chance to hit the heavy cruiser. Are you really that maneuverable? Fire broke out on their cruiser. I'm trying to hit this guy over here with secondaries, but it's probably too far away. Well, the 5-inch can more or less hit it. Because the 5 inch range out to here, to 12 1. We still got some torpedoes moving in. It seems like they haven't detected those. But they're not particularly sneaky, these torpedoes. They're pretty damn visible, with a 30% debuff to visibility. In the sense that they can see them a hell of a lot easier. And it looks like this destroyer is almost making an effort to get hit by them. Now, how is identification going? 63% on the light cruiser, the heavy cruiser is 49, and the destroyer is about half. Turps are still going. I'm not seeing any reports that they spotted those, but I can't imagine them not spotting them. Some damage to their heavy cruiser, but nothing too serious yet. We did see a couple of fires break out. But all the turrets seem operational. And probably eager to fire. She is maneuvering. And it seems like that did throw her turrets off a bit. As long as she keeps maneuvering and not drop torps on me, I'm going to be quite happy. I don't like to get torped. The ship has a decent turning circle. But it's not great. I could do with a better one. Now, the light cruisers are out of their smoke screens again. Chance to hit still a mere 3%. Let's wait and see what the identification says on these ships. The lights are almost ready. 91%. That's a destroyer. 77. I'm especially interested in what sort of torpedoes they carry. They're sneaky torps. I really want to know about it. 97, 98, 99. Go on. There. That's the live cruiser, the Foresight. Six inch guns. Standard amount of uh, bulkheads. Decent turning circle. Not a lot of armor. Easy to pen. Heavy cruiser, not yet fully identified. Their destroyers, very close. We're at 90%. Range to the DDs is 11 clicks. Keep an eye on them. So far, I think we're not really doing that much damage to the heavy cruiser. We might be too far away to actively pen that ship. So I'm probably going to have to get closer in order to deal damage to that. And also to save some ammo. Uh, DD. 62.5. Range 10. So you're out of range. That works for me. I'm going to push in. I'm going to tell the main guns to save some ammunition. Because while I have a lot of 6-inch ammo, I don't have a lot of 10-inch. And I really want to start wiping out lights and heavy cruiser. Ah, there we go. The Lancaster. 5% chance to hit with 9-inch guns. Mark 5. Torpedo tubes. 37 knots. Minus 70% visibility. With a 12.9 range. Yeah. Okay, what's your chance to pen me? 
Lancaster. Almost nothing. 8% and, well, fairly steady around 8%. So you cannot do that much. That's good. Target Fury with secondaries. 5 and 3 inch, hopefully working over the Fury quickly. That thing needs to go. Uh, main ammo, or main guns. There we go, good damage. The Fury's been cut in half. Flooding quickly. Not torping yet. Can we get rid of one of these guys early? Come on, secondaries. Work your magic. Are you disappearing into a smoke screen? No, you're not. You're just sort of sitting there. No torps. No torps from the hind. We're going to have to do a circle. Quick turn to port. Throw off the torpedoes. Lancaster still somewhere over in the distance. Uh, use the mains on the foresight. Secondary still on the fury. Because I think it's not really worth it to fire at the heavy cruiser at this angle. And I think that light cruisers, HE, should cause quite a bit of damage. Hopefully my bow turrets are turned. Oh, they're already turned. That's convenient. Damage? Nothing. Chance to hit? About 8%. Let's slow down a bit. Get a bit of an accuracy bonus. More often than not, I completely forget to do that. New target, light cruiser curfew. It's even closer. No hits, but the accuracy is going up. Fire on curfew, two fires, three fires. I don't need fires, I need kills. The destroyer still limping around with a half-flooded ship. I'm hoping to inflict flooding. Not your average fire. There we go. Stern, deck, deck? Hold on. That's not what I was expecting. I was not expecting to start penetrating their deck. Because I'm at 6 kilometer range. I thought there would not be any kind of plunging fire. But apparently there is. Uh, you know what? We're going to just torp in this general direction here. The Jed. Torps away. Because there's quite a lot of stuff heading either in this direction or coming in from the other side. Alright, main target Lancaster. Still not torping anything. But she's getting quite a bit closer. Hopefully I can now do damage to her. Chance to pen is only 60% though. There we go, flooding. Few bulkheads. Uh, she did just send one full set of greeting cards my way. She has torpedoes in the water. We need to get the hell out. My torpedoes are... Oh, narrowly avoided by the Foxhound. And it looks like either the Foxhound or one of their sister ships did send out some uh, regards. Fortunately, easily detected by the hydrophonic suite. Sorry, hydrophone slash sonar suite. Lancaster is seriously flooded. But, pumping it back out. 57, 58, 60, 61, 62, 63. Their damage control is impressive. 77, 80, 85. Good lord, you guys are good. Some more damaging hits on the Victoria Louise. And 99, the ship's dry. How did you pull that off? Anti-Torp 5? With an Anti-Flood 2 to back it up. Uh-oh. Oh, crap. This is going to be a problem. Because I think I might get hit. Hard to port. Harder. No! I didn't see those in time. I was too busy looking at the cruiser. Now, I know that my damage control is nowhere near as good as theirs. Because 
the AI seems to get a pretty significant buff when it comes to countering flooding. Good lord. The ship's flooded. I'm down to 20%. Structural is relatively okay. But... I'm just not pumping out any water. That heavy cruiser was flooded to 40%. Anti-flood 2. I have anti-flood 3, for fuck's sake, and I'm not getting any less water on the ship. What the hell? I'm also no longer doing any kind of damage to the Lancaster there. Right. Do not run into torpedoes. Accuracy has dropped significantly. I really hope they don't flood me again, because then I'm going to go down. But it doesn't even look like the compartments are fully flooded. It just feels like I'm really not doing that much to save the ship. Damn it, I'm really pissed off with myself hitting those torpedoes. They really shouldn't have hit me. That was just cause... Cause... Blah. That was just not a good way to pilot the ship. Also, the amount of damage that I'm putting out overall is a bit disappointing. 3,000 damage with the 10-inch guns. Considering that I'm fighting light cruisers, which I have a 100% chance to pen, it feels like we're either just missing all the shots... Yeah, we've hit 4%. And of course, when about 2,500 damage out of that 3,000 was the one DD that we one-shot. But now I'm not hitting anything. You know what? I'm going to go with a different ship. I'm going to go with a different build. I'm not sure why these things are all of a sudden complaining. Let's go with a large gun cruiser that just has a whole bunch of 6-inch guns. I'm going to make it smaller. And um, that's probably going to... Yeah, you know what? Sweep it clear. Uh, diesel 2, oil, yes, jack. We have induced boilers, aux 4, and shaft 3. I'm in for a brawl with this one. I am very interested in a brawl. I'm going to have a ship that has a very, very small turning circle. And by doing that, I can go in close, I can brawl, and I can have a lot of fun with them. If I go for just 25 knots, I can go 282 meters on the turning circle. That's really, really narrow. It's a really small circle. Now, I'm not sure if I even need anti-flooding, because it seemed to just do jack shit. Which is really quite disappointing. Uh, no turtle back. Radar 2, coincidence rangefinder, maximum sonar, uh, auto loading turrets, electrical turrets, super heavy 6 inch shells, increased complement of that, increase. No, actually, lidite might work. The threat with lidite is that I pop my turrets. But if I put a lot of armor on the turrets, uh, that might be a bit too much. Uh, this shouldn't be a problem. Right, centerline guns, 6 inch. Have at it. I cannot put another one on the stern. So there is a pretty good chance that this is going to make the ship pretty heavy bow-wise. No, actually we're still aft heavy, 3.5%. Really? Okay. The one thing is, I will need quite a few torpedo launchers if I want to deal with their heavy cruiser. So we're going to go with 21 inch fast torps with an increased complement. In order to deal with the destroyers, let's go 3 inch triple barrel. I need to throw out more fire. And maybe I can still put a couple of twos in some other spots. Yep, like over there. These fire out to 6.2, but have a really quick reload of only 4.2 seconds. 
some up there. A funnel might be nice. Let's put a funnel on here. Is a mega funnel going to be enough for this thing? Because it's really slow. Advanced? Even an advanced funnel is good enough. That's nice. I do have a pretty heavy aft weight offset still. Hmm, that doesn't quite fit. Oh, we're at point one. That's a little better. All right. Is there anywhere I could put more guns? Considering I'm glowing, I'm glowing, I'm going very close range. Wait, what? Why do I have a port weight offset all of a sudden? Look at that. I put the guns on here. Port weight offset. What is not balanced? That makes no sense. All of these guns are at the exact same locations. Port weight offset, point one. What the hell? <laughs> Why is this gun heavier than the other one? <laughs> that makes no sense. Why is the one gun just a fraction heavier than the other one? <laughs> no. No, 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 game. We're not doing that. Anyway, can I put another triple here? Yep. Can I put some guns here? Oh, yes. All right. This is going to be a brawly boat. Quite a lot of armor. Uh, lots of armor on the secondaries. Got to keep this one alive. For some reason, my port weight offset's going up. Say 13 inches. I'm just going to rely on a lot of armor to keep the ship alive. Rush in, kill DDs, dodge torps, and start throwing up my own. That's the plan. The ship is technically still too heavy. Or actually, no, it's not heavy enough. I can still put some more stuff on there, but I wouldn't really know what to put on there. Super heavy barbettes. More anti torpedo protection. Yeah, that could be useful. Small aft weight offset. That's because I put all that extra armor on. Um, I don't really know what else to put on here, actually. Let's just go as is. I'm not sure why that port, off port weight offsets here, but here we go. For some reason, the ship is feeling like it's not balanced. All right, here goes. One heavy cruiser, three lights, and six destroyers. Now, charge right in. Speed is only 25 knots. We already have torpedoes out. <laughs> we are already flooding one of their ships. What is that, a destroyer? Yeah. Definitely a destroyer. Lots and lots of smoke here. All the heavy cru- no, the light cruisers and the DDs are vaping again. Yeah, there we go. Smoke's here, smoke's there. Smoke's everywhere. Now my chances of actually doing damage to the heavy cruiser are not great. I'll have to close in and torp it. Because I don't think that the 6-inch guns are going to be particularly useful. Now, the torpedoes here might, if the AI overcorrects, which it looks like it will, they might do something. Well, they're always seeming to make an effort to try and get into the torpedo instead of moving away from it. Identification 80%. I really want to know what sort of torpedoes you have. Because you can bet your ass that you carry them. And I now need to know what type, what range, and especially what speed. Come on, DD. 100. Hello. Torpedoes in the water. 
type. 24 inch, 37.5, minus 65% visibility. Not something I'm interested in having a close encounter with. Too dangerous. Oh, ammo detonation on a light cruiser. Immediately taking a good chunk of health off. Light cruiser almost fully identified. There. Light cruiser with... No, sorry, it's a DD. Misidentification. It's a DD. And it also launched torpedoes. The light cruiser... Where are the light cruisers at? Here are the light cruisers at. I think the light cruisers have a lot bigger guns than I do. I just hope that they can't actually use them effectively. Like, they cannot pen the Victoria Louise. Good hit. 6 inch. 1428 damage. I want to set all the guns to high explosive because it's a DD. One or two good blasts. No more DD. That's one of the the DDs gone. That was the Firefly. Ah, we got ID on the heavy cruiser. Argonaut. 9 inch guns. Torpedoes. 19 inch. 14.4. Pretty visible. Light Cruisers, Concord, Newcastle, and Mercy. 7-inch guns, 14-4 torpedoes, 19-inch. Yeah, okay. What sort of sonar suite do you have? Sonar 3. Okay, so you will spot these. But then again, I can throw out a lot of them. And there are still a bunch of allies around. So maybe you will get hit. There we go. Two sets away. See, I'm already having a lot more fun with this ship because it's just more my style. Getting close. Preferably fast, but that's not always a possibility. And at this rate, just dodge torpedoes, brawl. Push in. Get close. Do damage. Looks like I'm once again hitting several ships at once, simply because they're getting too close to each other. Gatfly is getting downed, Sylph is flooding, many bulkheads, Argonaut, standard bulkheads, light cruisers, few. Very good. Torpedoes are still heading towards the group. Unless this DD makes a stupid mistake, it will just dodge the torpedoes. And it looks like the heavy cruiser is in the clear at the moment. The DD Strenuous just launched another set. That is not welcome here. Werewolf taking a severe beating as a 6-inch salvo does a significant portion of damage. There we go, that's the werewolf gone. Next target, Getfly. Range. 2300. This thing needs to go right now. Because I don't feel like getting hit by those torpedoes. They're fast ones, right? Yeah. No, they're not. They're 37.5s. They're not fast. Still, I'm not interested. Oh, shit. Starboard, 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 starboard turn. This is going to be torpedo beating. Because that light cruiser just opened up. Come on, get rid of the gadfly. I might be able to squeeze through a gap here. There we go. Turn, 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 turn. Steady as she goes. Yes! No. Fuck. Oh, I really thought I was going to be able to do that. That sucks. Shit! She has another set! That was unwelcome. Oof. That was really unwelcome. The one time that I don't check out my opponent, she just has another set ready. She launched one of the sets, turned, and then launched the other set. Now my torpedoes are away against the Concorde, but she immediately spots it and turns. Lovely brawler, but I don't think I'm going to win this scenario. Then again, I'm not really playing too serious. I'm just playing to see if the Victoria Louise can brawl against ten times the ships that I have. 
Uh, turns out maybe she can, but not the way that I'm playing her. So, um, bit of a, a fail compilation this one, but I hope that you had fun nevertheless. I was quite pissed off with the way that I got hit by the Torps previously. Uh, this time around, I'd say it's perfectly fair, because this time around I wasn't really playing to avoid. I was just playing to push in, push aggressively, and I got rewarded with a mouthful of torpedoes. My bad, I faced the consequences. Anyway, that'll be all. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you soon for the next one.